Our fight game Spratt has the striking definitely. Pacino for sure has the ground game. Speed, especially if that lead hand goes to Spratt. He also has the strength, endurance, they are even. Another fantastic main event matchup by our promoter Mick Maynard. Let's get it underway with Colin Cantrell. Tonight's main event is scheduled for five rounds of five minutes each for the Legacy Welterweight Championship. This fight is brought to us by Ammo2Go.com, your one-stop shop for all your pistol and rifle ammunition needs. Now, introducing first on my right, fighting out of the Houston Auto Auction Blue Corner. He stands five feet eight inches tall, weighing yesterday 165 and one half pounds. A Brazilian legend with a record of 35 wins versus 13 defeats and one draw. Born in Sao Paulo. And across the cage on my left, fighting out of the ammo to go on Comrade Corner. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighed at 170 pounds. A seasoned veteran with a record of 25 wins versus 20 defeats. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas, Pete, the secret weapon, Spratt. Your referee to give final instructions, Jacob Montalvo. Let's go, gentlemen. Let's go, gentlemen, to the middle. All right, this is the main event. We will have a good, clean fight. I expect you to protect yourself at all times and follow my commands at all times. Just touch them up. Back up. Two veterans in the cage. Pete Spratt has been around forever and a day. Remember back at UFC 42 when he stopped Robbie Lawler? Fighter, are you ready? It's still the fight that are everyone ready? brings up when they meet him. Fight. And here we go, Michael Chevello, Frank Trick with you, our main event of Legacy Fighting Championships number eight. Look out for the lead left hand of Spratt, the one that knocked out Flores in just 25 seconds last time out here in July. Spratt, fantastic kickboxer back in the day as well. I remember when he knocked down Mike Zambides in Melbourne many moons ago. Patino will charge him with an overhand right, try and lock up. Spratt, Gracie style, get a takedown and work for a submission. Spratt will try and keep it on its feet for as long as he can. Spratt does hold a black belt in American Kimbo, a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu under Rodrigo Pinheiro. And really, for everything that Patino does, his best attribute is the fact that he is able to jump in on you from any angle and from any position, grab a hold and get you to the ground. That's his best thing. Not a submission game, not a striking game, but actually his really unorthodox style of wrestling game is his best position. While it's on its feet here, look for Patino to throw a head kick. And it's one of his favorite techniques in the striking game. If it goes to the ground, he'll try and lock a heel hook on Spratt. And there's the first kick to the head, then to the outside thigh from Patino. Patino, a third degree black belt in BJJ, ranked in the FPJJ and CBJJ in Brazil. He's keeping that right glove up nice and high. He knows the uh, prowess of that lead hand of Pete Spratt. Spratt is always keeping his chin tucked here. Gets out of the way of the left hook of Patino. Straight right hand coming from Spratt. Not yet. There it is. Down the tube. Fires the left hook and the upper gun. Patino moves in for a single leg. Can he trip out the support leg here? Spratt just hops back against the cage. Patino can't get him down at the moment. He's digging. He's working hard. He's got to hold that far ankle up. He can sweep him out. He puts Spratt on the ground. Most fans picking Pete Spratt to win by a knockout here tonight. Patino's got the Cyborg in his corner. Uh, the, the, fe the male version, not the female. <laughs> He's in his corner helping him out. You can hear actually his voice, you can hear him yelling. Same direction. Yes! Turn the corner. Get out! Nice knee to the midsection from Spratt. And Patino is cut here early on over the right eye. It looks like just inside the bridge of the nose. Jab from Spratt. And you know Spratt's a nasty fighter. You know he's going to try and open up that cup now. It's like waving a red flag in front of a charging bull. Still with two minutes 15 to go here in the first round. Set for five. 
A cut this early against Pete Spratt is not what you want, Frank. Well, that's a, it makes it very difficult because now Spratt has a target. Wherever there's blood, where that blood is leaking from, he's going to be aiming for it the whole time. It makes it very difficult to try to cover it up because every time you drop your hands just a little bit, he's got pinpoint accuracy. He's going to snap right on top of it. Spratt, who said earlier he would love to be the oldest fighter to return to the UFC at 40 years old. We saw Antonio McKee make his unsuccessful UFC debut at, what was it, about 43, Frank? Officially, That's although some said. suggest that McKee is a lot older than that. He's older than Couture, so whatever that is. <laughs> Big up there off the right hand from Spratt. Oh, throws the right hook. Catino dropping his lead hand. Spratt going to the upper right rib cage. In control in the stand-up is Pete Spratt fighting Southpaw here. High right round from Patino. Oh, Spratt just tie style round kick. Pivots on the lead foot and careers it into the rib cage. The thump just reverberating around this arena. It's played host to a lot of great music stars over the years. The posters are signed along the Walk of Fame outside. Now they have one hanging up of Pete Spratt if he can knock out Patino here tonight. Tino, though, playing it patiently at the moment, hoping Spratt will make a mistake where he can capitalize and get Spratt down on his back. You know, it's weird the way, you know, Pete's kicked him twice in the stomach, hit him a couple times in the head, and you saw from the cut forward how much slower Patino's gotten. I don't know if he's just worried about the cut, worried about his own body, or, or if the, the leg kicks have taken a lot out of him, but he has completely stopped moving forward as much as he was. No explosion now at all. He's just kind of standing around and taking the, yes, being patient, but almost like scared patience. The 40-year-old Pete Spratt, who first began martial arts as a means to stay in shape during the off-season, playing football at Southeastern Oklahoma State University, is in control and looking super fit here after the first round. Those kicks that, that Patino blocked hurt his arms. You saw him as he was walking off. To his corner, he's looking down his forearms because he got kicked so many times, even though he's blocking him. It bothered his arms pretty bad, so he's in a position now where he's, his arms are going to start to fail him because now he's going to start pulling him out of the way of the kicks because he didn't want to get his arms hurt anymore. He's going to end up getting knocked out. Great big punch. You see how Pete's got it lined up. He's got that right hand. And Petito puts himself against the cage and then drops his hands. He dips and catches that left handed uppercut right on the chin. That, I believe that's where the cut started. Pete Spratch. Could have wiped that, yeah. George yeah, Patino. Spratt, an amazing out, athlete. Out. He still take holds many go, high guys. school Let's athletic records. Out. Out, out. And a no brainer. 10 9 in the first round on Frank's fine card for Pete Spratt. Time. Just wiping down the corner here of uh, Patino. We roll into the Fight. second round. Patino comes in at plus 100. Spratt at minus 130. But on fighting.com, thanks to Nick Kalikas. Spratt probing with the jab. Inside thigh kick nice and high on the thigh. Spratt in his preferred orthodox stance now. He did switch up momentarily to Southpaw in the first round. Faking the right hand there. Spratt maybe setting the right hand down the tube here. Lazy front kick there from Patino. It's a snaking lead hand from Spratt. Spratt dropping his head dangerously, but Patino may have it'll capitalize here. Drops down to a single leg, does Patino. Now to a double. Oh, elbows oh. from Spratt trying to take his ear off, Van Gogh style. He's got to keep defending that tape down. He's wanting to get up underneath him. Spratt pushes the head down. Patino wants Pete Spratt on the ground. And desperately, he cannot afford to play a stand-up game with Spratt any longer. Oh, now Spratt's down. And Spratt gets his back. Not where Spratt wants to be. He's been choked down a number of times, as you saw earlier on, when we put those statistics up. And you see how quickly 
Spratt got out of there, Frank, when he felt the Patino momentarily touched his back. He started having fear. You know, that you got a guy on your back, and that's how that's your big nemesis. You start learning right away. You gotta get back to my feet and start jumping. Oh wow. Spratt in top position inside the guard of Patino. Oh, oh, Spratt goes to work elbow. with the right hand to the body elbow, then the head. Face push, elbow. Elbow P. So it's Lisa right there in the corner. Calling for Beat to throw the elbows. Patino goes for an elbow of his own. The chance go up for Makako. And Spratt says, get your ass up. Let's do this standing. Fakes the body shot there. Spratt setting something, maybe a real leg round kick here. So, gentlemen, that's Patino what... is flat footed and Spratt dipped down to the liver, then sort of brought it up to the bicep area. Maybe should have committed to the liver punch. But Patino just so flat footed in the stand up. Flat, flat footed and not even attempting any kind of motion at all. Not head motion, foot motion, not even hip motion. He's just standing still. Time, and, time. And taking the beating at this point. Maybe a thumb to the eye there of Pete Spratt. And right. it's very dangerous with Patino being slow, so flat footed, okay. particularly because the hand speed of Spratt is gotcha. phenomenal. Watch the fingers. Sorry, sorry. If you're flat footed, right, you guys, don't have really? enough reactionary time. He's got to be up on the ball to his feet and constantly moving. Don't remain a stagnant target in front of Spratt. And look at Spratt. Plenty of head movement. Fires out a deep kick. Oh. Patino throws an uppercut, almost took out the ring lights. Amazing leg kick from Patino. A little bit all over the place here, George Patino. Left hook, right cross, 3 2 combination from Spratt. Look at him faking. He's trying to get Patino to commit here. And Patino just slipping under his own volition. Think that Patino is maybe a little intimidated in the stand-up here against Spratt. Yeah, he's gotten cut, he's gotten kicked, he's gotten beat up, he's, he, he's getting hit in every which way, and now he's exhausted because he tried those three heavy, heavy takedown attempts, finally got one, and ended up right back on his feet again. So he spent all that energy for nothing. Oh, the high kick from Spratt, the right hand, here he comes! Spratt, more combinations than a bank safe here in the second. And Patino just circles into that right hand, dangerously so. Spratt's got to be careful also, though, not to drop his own hands. Keep tapping in the chin. He can't get overconfident. Now it's good to see Patino moving. Spratt sticks the jab in the face. Good evasion, just... Ducks underneath the hook. Spratt fighting southpaw now. Usually when Spratt fights southpaw, he is setting up for a left-legged round kick. Usually when he fights orthodox, he's setting up for the jab and the straight right cross. Ten seconds, go. This is his 11th fight on HD Net Pete Spratt. He holds the all-time record. Comes in at oh, 7 and 3. Patino responds just before the bell. But I don't think it'll be enough to win the round for Patino. Although there's signs there from Patino that he's not done yet. And that's